Hello friends, welcome back to Dropo and Connors. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I managed to journal for the last 10 years of my life and how you can too. Also, if you're my mom and you're watching this, no, these are not like outside clothes. I mean, yes, they are, but like I have not worn them outside. I'm literally just wearing this fit for the video, so... It's clean, it's clean, that's why I'm on my bed. I made a how to journal video earlier this year, but I feel like my editing has glowed up a lot since then, so I decided to remake one because journaling is a topic that's like near and dear to my heart. So if you're struggling with journaling, whether it's because you don't know how to start or you can't keep a habit or you're just trying to figure out how to make the most out of journaling, I got you. I have been journaling for, for at least the last 10 years of my life. I remember picking up a journal as early as when I was 13. Wait, did I just reveal my age? Um, anyways, I picked it up mostly because I was on Tumblr a lot, but I would only like write a page and then I would not finish it. I feel like I'm qualified to make this video because I journal so much. Like for the past four years, average around three journals in a year. The short answer of how to be consistent and how to like journal a lot is just to have a lot of problems in your life, to have a lot of trauma, and you'll always have material. And if that's the case, which is what happened a lot here, you will always have a reason to journal. Jokes aside, I believe there is a method to journaling consistently and not to just journal when something bad happens. I love journaling so much because I feel like I have grown so much because of the practice. I feel like I'm able to regulate my emotions really well and I'm very reflective and it's all because of journaling as a practice. Without journaling, I'd probably still feel a lot more lost. It would be a lot harder for me to understand my feelings. And this was something that didn't happen overnight. This was something that happened to me after journaling so much so consistently over the years. So the first thing about being able to journal consistently is to first understand the principle of journaling. Journaling is such like a hot topic on social media, especially on YouTube. Like there are so many like how to journal videos. There are so many Instagram posts. It has popularized journaling as a habit, which I generally think is great. But unfortunately, it makes a lot of people think that your journal is supposed to look a certain way or that you're supposed to follow a certain method when journaling. I think it's good to like follow other people for inspiration. But remember, your journal does not have to look like other people's journals. Your journal does not have to be aesthetic because first and foremost, journaling is a form of release. It's an activity that allows your stream of conscious to just like flow, releasing your feelings, your thoughts into a medium, whether it's through voice notes, digital note taking apps, paper, scrapbooking. The medium and the method doesn't matter as much as the fact that you're using it to release your feelings and your thoughts. So principally, it really doesn't matter as much how your journal looks, whether or not your sentences make sense, whether or not your journal is aesthetic, because that is not what's important. What's important is you're able to release. It was really hard for me to journal as a teen because I felt like I had to do it every day. And once I missed a day, I was like, nope throw that journal out, I'm never going to journal again. And that's just not a good mindset because it will not allow you to have a good relationship with journaling, which is what I feel like I have now. And that's because I'm able to let go of these expectations of what journaling should look like and what it should be for me instead. Like I personally really love paperback. I love physical books. I love notebooks. I love pens, stationery. So that's why I've been keeping a physical copy with me, even though I'm well aware that if a physical copy gets lost and my life is probably like doomed, it just comes down to like personal preference. So whatever you choose, whatever you choose as your medium of journaling is valid. If you go on Instagram, Pinterest, TikTok, whatever form of social media that has a good journaling community, you'll quickly realize that people have like different ways of journaling. Some people journal as a form of like scrapbooking, like what they did in a day. Some people journal to talk about like their feelings. Some people journal to keep track of their habits. Do whatever you want. It is literally your journal. Remember that it doesn't have to be aesthetic and no one is going to see it. So just do and write whatever you want. So I personally journal to keep track of my feelings, my days, and sometimes I like to put like photos of like memories from like trips and all that. However, I'm not a very like artistically gifted person. My handwriting is just not nice. So even though I, I know that technically when you do like a brain dump, it's just like a wall of text, right? I noticed that people have like way better handwriting than me and then I started getting insecure and I was like, you know, what the hell? Like I shouldn't compare myself that way like it's so toxic to just like compare myself even in the sense of journaling so i became mindful of that and thankfully i stopped doing that because i don't think i would keep journaling if i saw it as some kind of like handwriting competition once you decide on a style you do have to keep 
at it. This is something you need to like really register in order to like actually commit to it. You need to know that you cannot feel the effects of journaling overnight. It's something that you have to keep at for like many many years and something you have to do consistently and while you do not need to journal every single day unless you want to it's really important to stick with it by sticking with it you should do it in a regular cadence a cadence that works for you and not just to journal when you're feeling bad because if you journal when you're feeling bad you will associate journaling with like a negative feeling and we don't want that we want to be able to like map out our feelings even when we're feeling okay or when we're feeling good we don't want to wait until things are bad to like sort out our feelings and a good analogy i like to use is like exams like you should not be studying for exams the night before you should be studying bit by bit way before the exam because by the time it's like the night before the exam then probably like there's only so much you can do Like I mentioned before, I use journaling as a way to like really emotion dump, you know, like talk about my feelings and kind of like reflect on my experiences. And I realized that when I first did it, it didn't feel natural. I was like, how do I even start? So journaling prompts is really helpful. There's a book that I will attach here. It has like a lot of useful prompts to like understand yourself. And I also have a video that I made. So use prompts find prompts from other people from books and whatnot and use it like your own if you don't feel like prompts really relate to you another thing i like to do is talk to myself from a third person point of view i'll write dear joy this is what happened this is how i feel and i find that to be a pretty good exercise as well so that's most of the video and tips on how i was able to journal for the last 10 years so some parting words i think when it comes to journaling it's really important to stick with it stick with the habit for like a few years but also to really be honest when you journal you should not pretend when you're journaling you should not pretend that things are better than they are it literally is an opportunity for you to release whatever tension you feel in your life because if you do not release it i believe that your feelings will come back to haunt you whether it's five years 10 years 15 years and we don't want that right we don't want to be haunted by ghosts of our past Okay, but now let's go do a little bit of fun stuff, which is flipping through some of my journals because I haven't done this. And in my last video, someone said it might be fun to like look through my past journals. Okay, I randomly picked out four journals and we're going to just randomly go through them. I do have a video, although it's not in the best like audio quality where I kind of like flip through most of my journals. Please watch it. I spent a lot of time making that too. Okay, so journal number one. This is my very first journal in New York City. I bought this when I was on a trip with my mom. It's from 2020 January. I think at this time, I was still very new to the city. And when I started this journal, obviously COVID, <laughs> COVID hadn't hit yet. So let's look at what I wrote. New year wish list. How foolish because COVID ended up happening and I was stuck in America for like three years. Next page. This is a little bit funny because January was when I just started my job at New York Times, which was like one of my longest like teenage dreams. Like I wanted to work at the Times since I was like 15 or 16. But over here, over here, I was already planning my next steps because I just felt like it wasn't a job that I wanted to stay in forever. And of course, I had an existential tone to it because I'm always existential and thinking about my future. <laughs> I had a really rough job search, I would say. I was the only one out of like so many people I knew who graduated without a job lined up. It was really brutal. I felt like I was going to be unemployed forever and I got my job in December. And I reflected on that experience, which I don't know, that's pretty cute, right? Like and then i had an entry called words where i think in the month of in the month of february i just wrote like words that i thought about a lot or words that like struck to me there's one by like one of my friends is wall love is putting someone else's needs and wants over yours and i find this i find this really funny because i think ever since i graduated college i've been trying to like heal my relationship with like words of affirmation like in the past words of affirmation was like number five in my like list of love language but recently it's like been making me cry so much like when people say nice things to me i will cry and i think like this was the start this this was definitely the start of when i was healing my relationship with words so it's cool to look back three years later and actually see some progress okay let's go to 2021 which i don't know i think it was the summer that i mean it was still the pandemic but it was a summer when i got 
reunited with my parents. And that was like when I started becoming more dissatisfied with my job. <laughs> when I was working at the New York Times, I had like this really cool opportunity to like meet Tara Lawrence at like a virtual event. And then she was like, she's like this really great journalist. And like I got the chance to like do a virtual coffee chat with her. And I remember being so like mind blown. And I have an entry where I recorded like wrote down things i learned from that conversation ha there's an entry about having a covid scare i had a lot of covid scares just because like at that time i like did a lot of tests like i test myself like weekly oh my god this entry in 24 hours since yesterday my day went from potentially good to disastrous from 20 dollar brunch in chinatown to walking from mount sinai with a covid scare deep in the thunderstorm i actually remember that i remember that day it was it was not a good day but it's funny how like I recorded it. My dad, after like not seeing him for like almost two years because of COVID, my mom, <laughs> um, like a picnic with a friend. So all in all, it's like it's really, it's really it's a really cute, thoughtful ish vibe. Oh my god, I made doodles comparing like my 23 years old self with my 24 year old self and reflecting how much I've changed. I have a page where I just like pasted stickers and said that LMAO, the stickers just fill the page. I love buying stickers so much. So it's always, it's not always that deep. Anyways, thank you for watching. I hope that was fun or informative or like at least entertaining. I don't know. Um, I'm just trying my best here. But if you got this far, Thank you so much. Let me know what you think. Please like, comment, and subscribe because help me help me get there. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.